Welcome to Business 360. I'm Archana Solanki and here are the headlines we're tracking this evening. The Lal Street bucks the global downtrend to end in the green for the third straight session. Sensex gains over 100 points after a choppy session. Financials lead with the gains. Adani stocks recover for the sixth straight session. All 10 group stocks end in the green after the conglomerate prepays loans worth more than 7,300 crore rupees. Indian bond yields hit a four-month high after U.S. Fed share signaled higher and faster rate hikes. The Indian market also sees inverted yield curve as short-term bond yields trade higher than 10-year yields on fears of tighter liquidity in the near term. Banking sources tell CNBC TV18 that the RBI is likely to extend Indusind Bank CEO Suman Katpalya's term by three years. The central bank is said to have found Katpalya's performance satisfactory and is therefore likely to favour management stability at the bank. Katpalya's current term ends on March 24th. That's an exclusive. Meta planning a fresh round of layoffs. Several reports suggest that thousands more could be laid off as earlier as this week. The tech giant had slashed 11,000 jobs last November in a bid to cut costs. It was the first mass layoff in the history of the company. Manik Sahar takes oath as the Chief Minister of Tripura for the second time after taking the BJP past the majority mark in the Assembly elections. Eight other ministers were sworn in along with Sahar. Prime Minister Modi, Home Minister Amit Shah and BJP Chief J.P. Nadda attend the oath-taking ceremony in Agartala. Russia's Wagner Group of mercenaries claim to have taken control of eastern Bakhmut. Western officials hinted at 30,000 casualties on the Russian side in their bid to capture the city. Zelensky warns that control of Bakhmut would lead to an open road for Russian troops to capture other cities in Ukraine. And on International Women's Day, we bring you the story of a 19-year-old student further the cause of women's empowerment. All right, uh, let's go straight to the day's market action. Indian equity showed resilience amid weak global queues. Bulls took charge towards the end of the session to recover from early weakness. Sensex gained over 100 points. Nifty ended marginally higher. Mid-caps outperformed banks. Auto showed uh, support, while IT continues to drag. Shares of Adani Group continue to recover all 10 group stocks, ending the session in the green for the sixth straight day regaining some of the lost ground since the Hindenburg report. This comes after the conglomerate prepaid more than 7,300 crore rupee loan to ahead of its maturity date to release some pledged shares in its group companies. As of today, group has ad added 33,000 crore rupees of market capitalization in, in this session, taking the overall market capitalization to nearly 9.2 lakh crore rupees. The group has added around 2.4 lakh crore rupees in the last six trading sessions. At its peak, the Adani market cap was more than 24 lakh crore rupees. So it remains well below those levels. Vivek Ayer joins us now with the details. Vivek, the group has prepaid its loan. What exactly is the impact this is going to have or likely to have on the conglomerate? Well, an extremely important development as far as the Adani group is concerned. Now remember, there was a significant amount of worry in terms of the proportion of pledged shareholding within the group stocks, especially as there was a significant decline as far as the share prices was concerned. However, what's actually happened is that the Adani group has gone ahead and prepaid over 7,370 crore worth of share back financing ahead of the maturity in April 2025. The payment has been made to various international banks and Indian financial institutions. Now, now remember, when you're looking at the proportion of the pledged shareholding at the end of the December quarter, Adani Enterprises was close to 2.7%, Adani Quotes almost 17%, Adani Transmission 6.62%, and Adani Green 4.3%. Uh, now, with the decline in the share price, you know, the proportion of pledged shareholding actually increased, but with the payment or the prepayment that has been made yesterday, there is a significant decline that will be seen as far as the pledged shareholding in the system is concerned. So, you know, the following companies, the company shares will be released post the prepayment. So in Adani Ports, 11.8% of the promoter's holding will be released. Adani Enterprises, 4%. Adani Transmission, 4.5%. And Adani Green, 1.2%. Basically indicates that there was a spike as far as the 
pledge holding was concerned, but it's now fallen quite significantly. Going forward, you know, two things to watch out for. Number one, taking into account the prepayments made in Feb as well as March, over $2,000 million of share back financing has been prepaid. And more importantly, the company says that they are looking to go ahead and prepay all of the share back financing before 31st March 2023. Right. Uh, thank you, Vivek, uh, for those updates. Uh, moving on, Jerome Powell, the chair of the U.S. Federal Reserve, sent global markets into a tizzy after he cautioned that interest rates are likely to head higher than central bank policymakers had expected. Powell said that a stronger-than-expected economic data indicated Fed may need larger rate hikes to temper inflation. The process of getting inflation back down to 2% has a long way to go and is likely to be bumpy. The latest economic data have come in stronger than expected, which suggests that the ultimate level of interest rates is likely to be, to be higher than previously anticipated. If a totality of the data were to indicate <clears throat> that faster tightening is warranted, we'd be prepared to increase the pace of rate hikes. Restoring price stability will likely require that we maintain a restrictive stance of monetary policy. Moving on, Indian bond yields at a four month high after US Fed shares signaled higher and faster rate hikes. The Indian market also sees inverted yield curve as short term bond yields trade higher than 10 year yields on fears of tighter liquidity in the near term. Lata Venkatesh is here with more. Lata, over to you. Today is a kind of historic day for the Indian bond market because there has been a yield inversion, uh, not a very positive thing. Now, uh, yield inversion means the near-term yields are higher than the longer-term yield. The 364-day T-bill yield, uh, which was auctioned by the Reserve Bank, the yield got cut off at 7.48%, which is a four-and-a-half-year high. The last we saw that kind of a yield on the T-bill, 364-day T-bill, was way back in November 2018. Uh, likewise, the 10-year bond yield also shot up. It went to 7.46, which is about the highest we have seen since uh, November of 2022. So that's a four-month high. Now, yields have surged across the curve because of uh, Jerome Powell's rather hawkish statements. The Fed chairman said that given the uh, strong economic data, yields may stay higher for longer and that they may have to rise at a faster clip which means a more than 25 basis point hike is possible. That's what the CME Fed Watch tool also is showing, that more people are veering to a 50 basis hike next time the uh, Federal Reserve meets. For India, what it means is that more and more people are pricing in a rate hike in uh, RBI's next meet in April. As well, the, uh, there is a liquidity tightness that will come in April when RBI returns the TLTRO money. So, you know, there will be a, a bit of a, a tightness, in the financial tightness in the market, both globally and in the domestic market. And hence, uh, the uh, ray, uh, yields in the near-term market have gone up. It doesn't really mean an inversion in India's case. It only means that there is more tightness expected in the near term than in the slightly longer term. But, yes, yields are headed higher. No two ways about that. Right, and moving on, the Reserve Bank is likely to extend Indescent Bank CEO Sumant Katpalya's term by three years. Sources have told CNBC TV 18 that the central bank found Katpalya's performance as a CEO satisfactory and is likely to favour the management stability at the bank. A career banker with over three decades of experience across multinational banks, Katpalya became the Indescent Bank's managing director and CEO in 2020. His current term ends on March 24. Indescent Bank was the top gainer on Nifty today. Meanwhile, Axis Bank's uh, managing director, Amitabh Chaudhary, called the Citibank deal a game changer for the bank. It will help the bank strengthen its position in the Indian retail banking sector and bring more customers under its fold. Speaking to CNBC TV18, Chaudhary said the price paid for the acquisition was around the market valuations. He added that 97% of Citi's employees will come to the bank that will aid in retaining Citi's talent pool. There are a huge amount of cost benefits that can come to us through this deal because the Citibank franchise was being obviously debited with global costs, both for the corporate overhead and technology support. Uh, you mentioned the 1,500 crores as uh, the amount of money we'll spend in transition, but once that goes away, uh, the benefits we can get in terms of reduced costs also will feed into the overall profitability of the franchise. So we are very delighted. We are also delighted by the fact that 
Uh, we closed the transaction one month earlier than what we had anticipated. 97% uh, of the employees have come into the fold of access. There was obviously also a requirement for express consents across liability products. So only on the express consent of the customer, we, they have been migrated to access. Meanwhile, shares of Sriram Finance rose following a large block deal amounting to 3% equity worth over 1,400 crores. Sources tell CNBC TV18 that a private equity investor is the seller and institutional investors are significant buyers. Chola Mandalam is keen to enter the housing space. We learn from sources that it's looking to buy controlling or significant stake in Aptis Value Housing. Aptis promoter and managing director has not identified a successor in the family. That's an exclusive. The U.S. Secretary of Commerce, uh, Gina Raimondo, who's in India for a four-day visit, participated in holy festivities at Defence Minister Rajnath Singh's residence in New Delhi today. While speaking to media, the U.S. Commerce Secretary said it's an honour for her to be at the gathering and wished everyone happy holy. She's, uh, the country's, uh, she's in the country on an invitation by Commerce Minister Piyush Goyal and is set to attend the Indo-U.S. Commercial Dialogue on 10th of March. Facebook's parent company Meta has planned a fresh round of job cuts. Reports suggest that the company could lay off thousands of employees as earlier as this week. Remember, the company had slashed 11,000 jobs last November as a part of its cost-cutting measure. This was the first mass layoff in the history of the company. In national headlines, BJP's Manik Saha took oath as the Chief Minister of Tripura for the second time today. Saha had replaced Biplap Dev in May last year barely eight months ahead of state elections. The BJP went past the majority mark, securing 32 seats. Prime Minister Narendra Modi, Home Minister Amit Shah were present at the oath-taking ceremony in Agartala. Indian Navy's Dhrub Chopper made an emergency landing off the Mumbai coast. The incident occurred when the advanced light helicopter was on a routine flying mission. Three crew members have been rescued and are being medically examined. Indian Navy said it has ordered an inquiry into the incident. A Russian mercenary group called Wagner, which is fighting in Ukraine, is claiming a key victory. The Wagner group claims to have taken control of the eastern parts of the city of Bakhmut. This city is in Donbass region and Vladimir Putin's stated objective is to take control of the entire region. Russian forces have laid siege to Bakhmut for the last many days, but Ukrainian forces are not giving it up without a fight. Ukraine's President Zelensky said that the Russian army would have an open road into Ukraine if it captured Bakhmut. Over 1.3 million people are protesting against the French government's controversial proposal to raise the pension age by two years to 64. This was the sixth round of protests against the policy this year, the highest so far. Banners held up by protesting unions read no to working longer. Unions are opposed to the policy expecting them to work two years more to be eligible for pension. CNBC's Charlotte Reid gets us this report. It was a big uh, success for the unions yesterday. There's 1.3 million people in the streets, according to the police, closer to 3.3.5, according to the unions, which means the truth is somewhere in between. The unions calling the sixth day of mobilization against the pension reform that was presented in mid-January by the government, uh, the unions calling it historic. It might not be quite the case, but it is in the highest mobilization against this reform. Uh, so it was a success for the unions. Uh, they're calling for another day of protests and strikes on a Saturday to allow other people to to protest the ones that can't strike during the week uh, and they're also calling for carrying on some of the strike in some key sectors that have already been impacted quite heavily uh, energy in particular the so nuclear output has been cut since uh, yesterday refineries total this morning uh, saying that there will be no deliveries from its refineries because they are all blocked transport as well ports heavily impacted docks Loire in particular four LNG terminals completely shut down according to unions uh, of course transport schools etc also being impacted and now the unions are calling for rolling strikes. So there will still be an impact over the next uh, couple of days and until next week when uh, the reform is actually being studied and voted on the two chambers. So in the meantime, the Senate has been debating on uh, the reform until 3.30 a.m. in the morning. Uh, but the unions are calling for an emergency meeting with President Macron to discuss this and the, the people in the street uh, against this reform. Uh, the government is keeping quiet at the moment. All right, it's time for a short break, but coming up next on International Women's Day, we bring you the story of a 19-year-old student further the cause of women's empowerment. Stay tuned, we'll be back.
Welcome back. Uh, the fight for gender equality and women empowerment is not just the domain of women in the workforce. It's a movement that begins in schools and colleges. And 19-year-old Zoha Chaudhary is one such warrior. On the occasion of International Women's Day and as part of our latest initiative, Future Female Forward, a women's collective, CNBC TV 18 Santhi Agora brings you Zoha's story. Zoha Chaudhary's days are chock-a-block. This undergraduate student at Mumbai's reputed St. Xavier's College studies microbiology, zoology and chemistry and the heavy curriculum keeps her busy. But her love affair with science began years ago. When I was in 10th standard, that was the first time I decided to pursue my career in science field. So I ended up my GC in science field in which I, really, I got a really good percentage in my 12th standard due to which I ended up in Xavier's. Here I got a really good exposure to different fields of science including seminars with very, uh, very good personalities and extracurricular activities. When she is not studying or attending classes, Doha is busy focusing on her other passion project, Women Empowerment. She volunteers with NGOs that work with senior citizens, women and children. Calling herself a proud feminist, Zoha dreams of building on her knowledge to expand on work centred around women welfare and hopefully inspire other young girls just like her role models inspired her. Some of my role models are Mother Teresa, Malala Yousafzadeh, J.K. Rowling and many others. So basically I aspire to have some qualities of them or you know to do some kind of contributions to my society. Zoha is also inspired to study further and that she says is a challenge because she had to work to convince her conservative family to support her undergraduate journey. She is now the first girl in her family to attend college and proud of it. Currently I am in FY so whatever free time I get I scroll through my course there are courses which basically include some certificate courses like uh, forensic science and stuff like that. So by the end of my TY, I'll start preparing for USMLE exams, which are mandatory if you want to pursue any further courses in medicine. So my first priority would be Harvard Medical Schools and different Ivy Leagues universities. Hopefully I get into one of these. She also dreams of a world where girl children get the same educational opportunities as boy children. Apart from studying microbiology and aspiring to make a name for herself in the field of science, Zoha wants to travel the world, solo. She wants to experience bungee jumping, skydiving, deep sea diving, parasailing and paragliding. But to have all these experiences, Zoha believes that education is the key and that's her primary focus right now. And we at CNBC TV 18 wish Zoha a bright future. Thank you. Thanks a lot for speaking to us, Zoha. Thank you so much. On the 14th of March, CNBC TV 18 will host what will be India's largest summit on gender parity in Delhi. Women leaders from all walks of life will be there and they will come together to brainstorm and help take decisive steps to bridge the gender inequality that exists in India and across the world. The event starts at 4.30 p.m. on the 14th of March and we will bring you live coverage right here on CNBC TV 18. And uh, with that, it's a wrap. Uh, stay tuned to CNBC TV 18 for more news and updates.